Jason here from Nathaniel School of Music. Let's learn Love Story by Taylor Swift, an amazing country pop song, right? So the first thing to realize if you're a piano player is there's not much piano. At least the hook which you hear comes from a banjo and then you have a prominent electric guitar as well as acoustic guitar, right? So it's not really a very piano centric song but we can take some influences from these other instruments which are there in the song as well as follow the vocal line by Taylor Swift and try to incorporate that as well in the piano so the way I've broken this song is there's an intro which is that banjo intro which I'll teach you last as usual in these tutorial videos then we'll go through the verse the pre-chorus the chorus then the guitar solo which has pretty much the same chords as the chorus. Then you will have a bridge which is a breakdown. Then it builds up again and then it goes to a scale change. So the original song is on the key of D major. That's what I'll be teaching you on. And the same song then drifts to the E major scale. Right, And the chord progression remains the same. It just has to be replayed or retransposed. And by doing it on a higher scale, the song tends to get a lot more energy, if you will. Right, it, 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 it goes to the next level. The singer also sings higher in pitch and so on and so forth. So let's first get to the verse. And I'm going to first break down the chords and then we'll try and look at a couple of patterns on the piano and uh, I'll try and give you as many patterns as I can think of maybe a couple or three at least so so that you can find out a pattern which you like or which works for your skill level right so let's get cracking so in the verse so we are going to uh, ignore that banjo intro which I'll teach you later which is We'll also try and learn that. So first the verse part when she starts singing. So that's D major. G major. B minor. A major. One more time. and so on so most of the landings of the vocalist are on these roots in any case it's on the D major triad so she's staying pretty much on that D right and then she says B sings B and then you find a chord which has the note of the vocal line, right? So, in addition to playing the verse this way, you can play every chord four times. This could get the job, job done. B minor. And so on. Another thing you can consider doing is a nice arpeggio pattern which I'll play it once and then I'll I'll tell you what's going on, right? One more time. What I'm doing in the, I, I'll just show you for one chord. So you do D, so you can do D with a fifth supporting it, which is A, or you can do D with D octave. I, I guess for the D chord, I'll go with D with D octave. So if you're counting, it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Or a better way to count would be one and two and three and four and one twice. No, you G. So, this 
this works for all the four chords na 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 so for the b minor and the a major chord i'm playing it with their respective fifths for the d and g you can play it with the octave um it's just something i'm doing but if you like fifths you can do fifths throughout if you like octaves you could do octaves throughout right let's do it up to speed this for pretty much the entire verse another thing you could do is you could play broken chords but that we'll probably leave for the other parts of the song right let's now do the pre chorus and the pre chorus chords are mentioned there there's g a b minor d then g a b minor for two counts g and a so what i meant by this sort of a bracket is you need to play na na you're going to change the chords faster than the verse as well as the chorus so it just means a faster chord change so you could do na 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 a na 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 b minor na 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 d na 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 g an a na 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 b minor g a so it ends with a g and an a so let's revise that again g a b d minor d major sorry g a major b minor 3 4 g 2 so last two chords are very unique b minor g a right so it's two counts 1 2 3 4 chorus Okay I'm counting it as 1 2 and 3 and 4 and right but you could even count it as 1 2 3 4 if you wish right so the pre chorus uh, well you could continue the same arpeggio pattern which we saw for the verse let's try that first B minor to the chorus right so with the pre you can play that way or another way you can do the pre chorus could be just to hold the chord in the right hand and do a build up in the left hand hold the g and the a at the end let's do that again so it's like a 4 is to 1 ratio 1 2 3 4 right the left hand's going 4 and the right hand's going 1 let's see how that works g a b minor d na na g a major b minor g pattern could also work another thing you could do is you could take a power chord or a fifth chord of the d scale which is d a d or you can build it from the a that will be a d a and then in the left hand you can just play an arpeggio around that or if you want you can also do a up the chord but i guess an arpeggio would also work but then we already have you can do that or if that gets boring your b 
basically using the chord tones of the respective chords with the fifth and the root and the fifth of the scale sort of kept very very importantly played so so this is how i'm playing the g chord then the a chord i'm just adding a c sharp there instead of that a which got boring so g you can do b or you can do a there i guess i'll do b basically these two fingers remain identical and you're just using your thumb which is like the most flexible angular finger you have right so you can play around depending on what note you think works the left hand's not going to change it's just the right hand which is playing around and that's what happens with the banjo in the song so let's now move to the uh, chorus of the song which is the hook and whatever we do with the chorus also works very well for the guitar solo which is to follow right so the chorus you can try to play like a let me first show you the chords it's a 1 d major again d major 5 of d which is a major na 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 b minor which is the 6 minor na 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 g which is the 4 major A, which is the five major again. Na 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 That would work fine, but um, what I thought you could also do is follow the vocalist a little. Perhaps you could do something like. Just basically follow the vocal line, and again you have A and D, and the rest of the notes of the chord come here with these two fingers, while with the other fingers you are trying to copy or capture the. Uh, some aspects of the vocal line so it could sound like this d major b minor g major you can also play a few more notes add some of the arpeggios which i talked about in verse and the pre so if you are not aware of playing that just hold the chords i think that should be fine now do the na 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 a na 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 and another thing i'm doing with my left hand is to try and play every off beat which is the and of the bar with my thumb of the left hand very softly if you can do it do it if you can't just hold it right however if you can add that eighth note makes it a bit more energetic right a na 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 to play it with a lot of dynamics get louder and get softer or follow your singer add those melodic lines there so with the right hand you with, with the chorus you can start with basic chords and then add the thumb on the eighth note as a soft ghost like sound and in the right hand with the top fingers you can try and do 
follow the the melody line of the singer right so that's about the chorus now you can look at perhaps the bridge of the song for the bridge of the song you can just keep it very simple um just hold the chords which is na 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 b minor g na 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 d a na 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 b minor g na 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 d a that's only twice and a good way i i think you should pl consider playing is play it with some spread voicing so b f sharp and d right so you can you can go quite low in your chords and it won't sound muddy na 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 g g d b that's the voicing na 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 you don't have to go that low you can go high na 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 so the voicing is nothing but root fifth and third not root fifth and octave it's root fifth and third we'll also put a link uh, wherein you can watch a video on spread voicing i've taught that in quite quite amount of detail so after the bridge what happens is they do the chorus on the old scale and right after it's on the old scale which is d there's a sort of a stop and then the song goes to the e major key where you play play pretty much the same thing but the e major transposed chords which i've written here which is nothing but e b c sharp a and b which is still 1 5 6 4 and 5 of the scale of e major earlier you did the whole track on d major so the e major chorus let me just demonstrate very quickly so it comes from the d major chorus right so you go na 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 b minor you stop at the 3 g 2 3 4 8 2 stop and then it goes to the e chorus na 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 c sharp na 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 a a b e and with all of these with the entire set of um, sections which i showed you you guys need to use inversions which is the closest way you can frame the chords together if you have doubts on chord inversions do check the description we 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 will have linked up the chord description series which you should check out if you are not familiar with playing chords close to each other right and uh, finally coming to the banjo intro and the guitar solo which at some point you guys may play or want to play so the banjo intro happens at the intro and the solo happens in the solo if you have a guitar player he's going to do it if you don't you could do it it sounds quite nice on piano so let's see how the banjo intro sounds first of all this is the first way to play it where you take so i've written the notes here so you can follow it there um one the easier way to play it i guess would be to play the first note in your left hand and the remaining notes in the right hand because it sort of pedals it repeats right right so i'm doing f sharp f sharp a e d e d a d okay that's the high e here into 2 all these are into 2 second chord so or what did you do you just move the f sharp down to the the e here and then third chord now you come back to f sharp move the a to b and now g f sharp with a on the thumb sharp 
with a B on the thumb, G with an A on the thumb. You could also consider playing this throughout the chorus as well. It will sound quite nice through the chorus or maybe even the verse. You just have to change the order of these chords which I'd leave to you guys to experiment. Another way to play this is to try and play it with one hand and play the bass notes in the left hand. That will make it sound a lot more bigger. A is the bass. B minor, G, and so on. Yeah, but it, it gets a little tricky sometimes for some of you, perhaps. But if you can build towards doing the intro independently in the right hand and the bass notes in the left hand, it'll sound awesome. Coming to the guitar solo, the guitar solo is written here and it's played over your chorus chords. So it's quite easy. Let, let's just look at it. Uh, I'm just following the notes. D, D, G, D, F sharp, D, E, D, 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 E, D, F sharp, D, E, D. Gap. There's a gap in these lines. So... the D chord you're going to do repeat and then when you come to the A chord so that's D E D F sharp D E D E D C sharp D E D and then B minor chord like a long descent, right? Repeat. Then G. Okay, the last chord. G, D, C. The last one. E, D, D, C sharp, C sharp, B, B. Back to the bridge. And it goes on. And then the scale change and so on. So you have the banjo intro. It also sort of happens at the outro as well. So yeah, it's, it's quite a nice song to play on the piano. You, even though if you hear it, you may not... Uh, distinctly hear the piano I guess it's used maybe as a passing instrument to hold chords but it's a very nice song to play on the piano and um, follow the chords to uh, to what I've written and also follow the timings of each chords and check the descriptions for links to the other tutorials if you have doubts with whatever I'm saying and have fun playing the song cheers